blessing, it can be a small blessing, whoa, and like that, it can be a small voice or a big voice, and in the blessing board, and just there's a little notepad, you can write down the blessing, something that you're thankful for, and I think that's a wonderful idea, and I appreciate those uh, getting that up and, and, and just designing it and coming up with that idea, and so write down anything you want, but I do need one favor, though, please, please try to contain all of the mentions of Dale Derby, you know, it, it's going to get a little awkward in the congregation that we got 10 people saying Dale Derby, Dale Derby. So if you see like five of Dale Derby's up there, just we get it. We get it. We're all blessed. And so just try to hold back, have a little restraint with that. I know it'll be hard for this congregation, but I think you can do it. I think you can do it. Thank you for our blessed board people. Thank you for having a great extension of being a blessing. We live in a world that really is very focused on our priorities. We like our priorities. We like to focus on what we want to focus. And we think everybody else should focus on what we are focusing about. One example of this is Elon Musk. And a lot of you know who Elon Musk is. He is quite famous. He's an entrepreneur. And he found it, kind of SpaceX, Tesla, Solar City, and has had major influence on these companies. He was writing one day because he was very upset in SpaceX because somebody had the audacity to miss a launch because their wife was having a baby that day. He heard of this terrible miss ordering of priorities and sent out an email to the entire company scolding this employee for making his priorities incorrect. In the email, he said, everybody has to choose their priorities in life. You are either with us or you are against us. And there is an employee who chose to go to the birth of his child instead of the rocket launch, and that is unacceptable behavior. This employee needs to make a choice. Is he with the company or not? Now, you always thought it great to be working there and tell that story. You're maybe a little shocked. How could anybody believe that you should miss the birth of your own child to go to work that day. But that's Elon Musk. He is hard driving, he is a workaholic, and he is all about the success of his company. And it doesn't matter what other family obligations, activities that you need to be part of, you need to put SpaceX Tesla, Solar City, first in your life. And that means missing the birth of your child. We are taught to be self interest because self interest is a powerful force in our society. Everywhere around us, we are taught to be focused on my priorities. But in 2017, we want to shift that. The church has the obligation to move that perspective that the world has onto the perspective that Christians have, where Christians are sacrificial, Christians are selfless, Christians are concerned about the priorities of God and not their own priorities. And so we're going to have a whole year <coughs> of focusing on kind of our vision statement, loving God and our neighbors as we live daily for his glory. The process to accomplish that, and we rotate this every single year. Last year, we focused on become. The year before that, we focused on belong. And now this year, we're going to focus on bless. We are about people belonging to God, becoming like Christ, and being empowered by the Holy Spirit to bless the world. That is what Castle Rock's vision is. And so this year, we always want to highlight and hold fast to one major element of the three Bs. And this year, it's going to be bless. 
It's going to be a year of how we can be a blessing to our community. So let's look at this. When it comes to being a blessing, it is not just a decision. A lot of times people think that being a blessing is something you just decide to be. That one day you wake up and think, you know, I'm just going to bless people around me. But really that's not how we change. The process of transformation doesn't happen by just one decision. It's really a process because it's so hard for humans to move from that self-interest to that selfishness all the way to being giving and kind and considerate of others. It's so hard for us to really transform into the image of Christ that it's not so much a decision, it's a process. And in these verses, I want you to look at the three processes that Paul gives us and how we can be a blessing to those around us. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28 to 32. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. <coughs> Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind. To one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. There's these three examples of moving from selfishness to blessedness. The first one is the thief. Look at Ephesians 4:28 and notice the process that the thief goes through. Let the thief no longer steal, but Rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Now notice the first step of this process. The thief is only concerned with his own self-interest. He only cares about himself. A thief that is willing to steal your stuff that he hasn't worked for, that he hasn't labored for, that he has no entitlement to, he's not concerned about your welfare one single bit. He's only concerned about what he can get. It is the ultimate expression of self-interest. He's concerned for what he can gain from stealing from you. But Paul doesn't leave the thief there. And this is where a lot of Christians get stuck in more of the become stage. Let him do honest work with his own hands. So he moves from self-interest to self-fulfillment. That means that he is able to provide for himself, <coughs> provide for his family, that he is now not a hindrance to others. He's not taking from others. He is being involved in the transaction, transaction process that he does good, honest work. He is compensated for that work, but he's not giving back. He's not being a blessing. He's only the one who you could see in church that says, well, I come, I mind my business. Now, I don't get overly involved, and I don't really make a blessing in the congregation, but I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not saying any mean things to anybody. Nobody would even mind me at all. But Paul is saying that true transformation is not just staying there. A lot of times we want to stay in that time of transition. But the true person, the true spiritual maturity is the individual that says, I want to be a blessing. Now look, at what happens here, so that you may have something to share with anyone in need. Now, you have spiritually progressed to the point that you are a blessing and you're willing to give to those 
others around you. You see this kind of in the mountains. And I know that you have had a whole year without mountain stories. And I thought, I need to repent and give you more mountain stories. People kept coming to me and saying, more mountain stories, more mountain stories. We miss your mountain stories. And so I said, well, okay, I will. So I want to tell you about a mountain story. Now, when you hike, you always come across camps like this. There's a tent, <coughs> sleeping bags. There's probably an inflatable mattress, you hope, if they're good tent campers. Thank you, Mark. You're all sitting. Mark's a blessing. Could have sat back and said, oh, I feel so bad for him, or got me a water. And you walk past it, and there's nobody ever at these campsites. They're out hiking, doing their thing, climbing some mountain. Now, if you were a truly self-interested, selfish individual, you could sit back in your mind and go and rob this. You would get, a lot of times, a $400 or more sleeping bag. You could probably pull out about $1,000 worth of gear in one of those spots. Now, if you stole their stuff and walked back down the mountain, you could pawn it, sell it, and you would be better off. But think about the person that would be willing to do that. (coughs) Now the hiker would come back in the middle of the night, freezing cold, no food, And now they can't hike out because they're tired from the day and you have a good chance of them freezing to death. In the mountains, you don't ever really see people stealing from one another. (coughs) They're not willing to do so. Because if you do so, you may be really hurting other people around you. But I also notice that there's most people who will not touch your stuff. But a lot of people aren't concerned about helping you as well. Now, they'll leave you alone, but will they sacrifice their goals for you? As I notice that people who have done this more and more, they make a transition. They move from just wanting to do what they want to do, and they move to the point where they want to help you accomplish your goals. That is somebody who's moved from, I'm not going to steal your stuff, I'm not going to, you know, touch your stuff to, hey, can I hike with you to help you get up that mountain? Now they want to help you to accomplish your goals. That's the process of transition for the Christian. Now, Paul moves from this process of transition from the thief to the tongue. Look at Ephesians 4, 29. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Now notice the three-pronged transition process. First of all, stop stealing. Stop tearing people down with your tongue. Now the term there, corrupting, literally means rotten food. It means that you have rotten vegetables or fruit That if you were to eat, it would cause you to become sick. So imagine your words to be like spoiled milk. (coughs) If you use your tongue and give people spoiled milk, you know what they're going to do in a matter of a few hours. They're going to throw it up. They're not going to feel good about themselves. They're not going to feel healthy. They're going to have themselves pouring over some toilet, feeling terrible inside in their stomach. That's what corrupting talk does. It causes people to throw up and feel awful. And so Paul is telling them in the process of transition with your tongue, stop tearing people down. Stop making people sick with your vocabulary and with your words, but instead, build people up. Now you are there trying to say good words to build people up and do so by the idea of be a blessing. Give them grace to those who hear. In our transitions in our Christian life, 
ask yourself, where are you? Where are you in this process? Are you somebody who is so self-interested that you're willing to hurt and damage others so that you can gain? That boss who takes credit for all of your work because he or she is concerned about their position in the company? Is it the individual who's willing to rip you off so that they can gain financially and you can be hurt? Are you the person that is willing to degrade others with your tongue so that you can feel better about yourself? Are you the person in your marriage that is so concerned about the welfare of your spouse that you aren't ever tearing them down with your words, but instead always giving them grace? Where are you in this process? Are you the person who is damaging? Are you the person who is doing nothing or are you the person who's being a blessing? That's how we all change in Christ. <coughs> you see this at the last part <clears throat> when it comes to <clears throat> our behavior. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30 to 32. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander... Be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. There's how God works is through the power of the Holy Spirit. We in our congregation desire to be a blessing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Paul is telling them for you to be part of this transformation process that it's essential that you don't grieve the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? It means that if you're not being a blessing, somebody else may not be a blessing. It goes back to this pay it forward type of concept. All of a sudden, when you start being a blessing to those around you, they want to be a blessing to those that they are around, and then they become a blessing to those though. though they're around, and all of a sudden you start to see everybody feeling like they are being blessed. That's why we wanted to do the bless board. We wanted to create a culture of blessing. We want to be a congregation that feels blessed so that we are a blessing. That's what Paul is saying. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, you are allowing bitterness and wrath and anger. All of this grieves the Holy Spirit. Because when you spit up bitterness or wrath or anger or clamor or slander to those around you, have you ever felt like after somebody has beat you up with their tongues, have degraded you, have made you feel awful, who has stolen from you or has been somehow hurtful you to you, you felt like, you know... I just feel like being a blessing today. You feel like giving a blessing, but not the blessing we're talking about. The reason is because you have grieved the Holy Spirit and stopped the partnership with God. God is partnering with us. And so when we create a world of blessing, it only gets bigger. But selfishness causes the world of blessing to shrink. It's kind of like... What Adam Smith said in 1759, he says most people would care about missing their little pinky than any major catastrophe across the world. If you had somebody who has just went through a major earthquake, they lost their lives in some place and in our world, we would sit back and think, well, that's awful. And Adam Smith would say they would say all the right things. Well... I really am sad about that. I will pray for them. That it's terrible. And we say all the right things. But we don't lose any sleep that night. You all went to bed. But if you knew you were going to get up the next morning and somebody was going to take a knife to your little finger, you know what you would have done? You would not have slept as well. Why is that? Because the power of self-interest is so overwhelming that it takes years of Christian progress and maturity to help us to grow past self-interest. 
You see the final stage, though, as Paul ends this section. Forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. Forgiveness is the ultimate sign of blessing. Because you don't want revenge. You don't want self-interest. In forgiveness, you're willing to put yourself second and to put the other person first. You want them to feel good again. You want them to feel blessed. Forgiveness is the key to being a huge blessing. And God modeled that because Jesus Christ came. If you will believe, confess, repent, be baptized for the remission of your sins, rise up over that water, God was a blessing to us. Let us this year move forward to being a blessing to others. Why don't you do so as we stand and sing the imitation song. And thank